thinking we'd known each other for less than 48 hours and this dude is proposing to me. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Sydney. So I'm back with another video, totally different than my normal videos. Like sometimes I do vlogs, but this is a story time that's pretty insane. And to be honest, um, number one, I never thought anyone would ever propose to me. And number two, let alone in Sweden. So <laughs> before we get started with this, I'm going to give you guys like background. Make sure you guys subscribe, hit the notification bell. So then you guys can get notified when there's a new video up, if you guys enjoy my personality or anything like that. But if you guys want to be part of the Snap Fam where I talk about like a lot of weird things that happen to me, whether it's in the gym or things like this that are on Tinder, because I talk about this stuff all the time on my Snap. Or if you guys want to be like the first to know about anything, Snap Fam's where it's at because they were the ones that requested this after I posted on my Snapchat. I was like, guys, guess what just happened? And then you guys were all like, story time, story time, story time. So I decided... Let's do a story time. Um, basically right now I'm gonna give you guys like background and everything like that. This is just insane. Like I never thought this would happen. So get yourself a snack. I have a salad and water because health, but get yourself a snack. Send me your Snapchats if you guys are watching this video. Add me on my snap, like my Instagram and stuff. This is the craziest thing that's ever happened to me ever in my life. And I can't believe it happened. So I wanted to do it while it was fresh in my mind rather than waiting a while because you guys did request it so I was like hey you guys want to see it but let's just get into the video so a little bit of background for everyone I'm in a very small town in Sweden filming this and this happened in a small town in Sweden so a lot of you guys who are on my snapchat like know kind of like where I am right now but this town is a population of 40,200 people that's not a lot when you think about it Cause here I have already seen like seven people that I matched on tinder with at the gym and grocery store so I feel like that's kind of weird and that's how you know it's a really small place this place is also filled with like forests it's pretty rainy weather there's beaches there's like rivers everything like that it's a much greener place than where I'm from but you guys know that Niels you guys have seen him on my Instagram, my Snapchat, all that stuff. I'll be with him in Germany. He looks just like these Scandinavian boys and they are just my type. Yeah, this town is filled with like really hot guys, really hot girls. Like all the girls I see here are picture perfect and they're like very quiet here and more reserved. The last bit of background that I want to give you guys is my Tinder bio and what it says. So I actually have it memorized because I'm that type of girl who knows exactly what I say on all of my bios. Um, it just says currently traveling right now looking for some friends smiley face 17 dot leo dot youtuber dot so now that i've given you guys the background i feel like you guys can kind of understand it a little bit better and like the dynamics that are going on and everything like that so at this point i had been in sweden for two weeks now and i've been on tinder for around like a week and a half and then I'd been on four Tinder dates besides this. And when I say Tinder dates, these were going to the gym with someone that I met off of Tinder or going to the park with them with their dogs. Like this was definitely a situation that's all friends. There's no like kissing, hugging, hand holding involved because I just don't want to have anything besides like a friendship while I'm here. So obviously at this point, because I'm on my fifth Tinder hangout date, I have not had any problems. Everyone's been super nice. And then this situation happened. <laughs> so we started talking on Tinder the second day that I had the Tinder account here and I only had it to have friends. We were just talking as friends, like it wasn't weird at all. Then we moved our conversation over to Snapchat, pretty like basic. Um, there was nothing weird going on. He would just send me like smiling selfies or like a picture of his dog. He also seemed really similar to me because he had a dog that he loved. He likes to work out. He has a job. He's not lazy he's hardworking. after we started snapchatting though we were like hey like we this is boring like let's actually hang out because he knew i was i wasn't bored here and i'm not bored here but i like being around people my age and that gives me like an opportunity to like have human interaction with people that are not you know 12 or 40. so as you guys know i've still been editing my videos here i still have conference calls so i'm spending a lot of time in coffee shops and my favorite one is called espresso house here I didn't put him in any of the vlogs so if you guys are trying to guess like who it is he's not in any of the vlogs and he's not following me on any social media now so you guys probably will not be able to find him but since you guys know I have a lot of work to still do here with my social media stuff so I need Wi-Fi I still I have like an international phone but I need it on my laptop 
So I sit at these coffee shops all the time. And specifically, I sit at an espresso house here. And it's a really nice coffee shop. A lot of people go here to fake out, which is like to eat a snack and work and hang out and talk and chat. So it's kind of like a picnic, but it's not. It's, it's like a thing that they do here, which we don't really do in the States. So the first meetup. This is where things are like chill, it's fine, and everything's cool, guys. So we decided to meet at my favorite coffee shop called Espresso House. And this is a place here in Sweden that's like equivalent to a Starbucks. And a lot of people go to Fake Yeah, so we decided, since I was already there doing my work, we would just Fake it there. When he got there, I was on my laptop, I was like talking to him and multitasking, which was probably pretty rude, and it was my fault for doing it. So I ended up closing my laptop, putting everything away, putting my phone away, and just like giving him my full attention because he was giving me really great conversation like it wasn't weird at all he wasn't flirting with me he wasn't hitting on me and then um he was like well the weather's really nice like let's go outside but i put everything away we went outside and we decided to like enjoy the town he like you know showed me around places i've been here a decent amount of times but things change so it's, it's kind of cool to like go with someone who's like a local. So on this particular day it was actually really hot, really sunny, and really nice. Um, when I say that normally here it's like raining and stuff and in my vlogs you guys will see a lot of the days it's like sprinkling. But on this day it was hot, it was nice, and it was like perfect weather to go to the park. So when you're around someone and you meet them for the first time there's usually a couple things that stand out to you that you notice about someone. And for me personally, I noticed three things. Number one, he's a major gentleman. Number two, this plays a huge role later on. He has snus in his back pocket. So if you guys don't know what snus is, it's a tobacco product that's usually not loose here. At least here, it's like a huge trend. Everyone does it. And you just put it up in your lip and it's like a tobacco thing. It's like nicotine and stuff. But that's a huge trend here, but he would keep it in his back pocket. So keep this in mind because this plays a huge role later on. And then the last thing I noticed was the way that he walked. Like, he walked outward like this. And, I mean, it doesn't really play a huge role, but that was just something that I noticed about him. Since he was a major gentleman, he told me I was beautiful once, and that was just, like, came up in conversation. He wasn't hitting on me in the way that was, like, weird or anything like that. He hit on me, he didn't try to hold my hand, he didn't do anything like try to kiss me, look at me weird. He didn't look at me in a way that was like, ooh, look at that girl or anything like that. So I never got any weird vibes off of him in general, and we had a great dynamic because we were just able to talk and walk and hang out and just just be chill with one another so we hung out that day for two and a half hours talking continuously like the conversation was never dead and even when it got quiet it wasn't awkward which was nice but we were like talking walking hanging out at the park and after two and a half hours we decided to part ways so I did not plan at all on seeing him again this week I thought okay he's busy he has friends he has a social life like He's not going to want to see me again. So I didn't ask him to hang out. But then that night he was like, hey, what are your plans for tomorrow? And I was like, well, um, I don't know. I think I'm hanging out with someone in the morning. And then later on I'll be at Espresso House because I have conference calls. Because in the States it's like nine hours different from Arizona. So like a lot of my calls are in the afternoon here rather than in the morning. So after hanging out with Tinder Boy 2, we were just like hanging out. Then I went back to the coffee shop, did my conference calls. And in walks this tinder boy so basically we're gonna call this tinder boy anton anton walks in and this is the second meetup so the second meetup is about to go down it's about to get really juicy guys anton walks in i'm sitting closer to the back so he has to look for me and this is how i know that he was looking for me because the moment he walks in he looks all the way around and i see him because i'm sitting in the back with my my like face facing towards the front so i can like see people that are walking in and out and it just helps me kind of stay focused because i know that there's something going on around me, but at the same time, I'm not like fully engaged so I can keep like editing, doing my calls, whatever is going on. So then when he saw me, he like came over, he went to sit down. And the one thing that I remember that like really stuck out to me, and I have no idea why this stuck out to me, was I thought he had adjusted his snus in his back pocket. So in his back pocket, he literally reached to the side and he moved it so he could sit down and I was like wow he must have a really big pack of snus like I remember thinking that in my head and I don't know why I even noticed that or why I thought about that but that was something that was super interesting that I just remember like noticing about him because I already knew that he did snus and I'm not like a huge fan of snus either so when he comes to sit down he moves his snus from his back pocket over a little bit to make it more comfortable and I remember this was something that was just super noticeable and I noticed right off the bat I was like dang he must snus every he must snus every day so I was just 
thinking that in my head. I didn't say anything because obviously like that's how he lives his life, but that was just something that I noticed. Still today, nothing seemed any different. He wasn't trying to hold my hand. He wasn't looking at me like longingly or flirting with me or anything like that because he knew that number one, I was just looking for friendship and number two, the dynamic just hadn't changed. So after he finished eating, I was still editing and he insisted, I remember this, he was insisting that I need to go get air. He was like, it's not good for you to be sitting this long. So of course, like, I knew he was right because I really did need to go outside and he was like he wants to go call Luft Meme like whatever and so he got up and I got up I put all my stuff away put it on my backpack and we went outside we went to this river and down at the river it's like the riverbank area it's really pretty it's really green it's really nice it's kind of like now that I think about it, it's kind of romantic and there's like a lot of cute pictures you can take there. So while we're down by the riverbank, conversation isn't really flowing. He seems to be getting like kind of fidgety, which is totally fine because I felt like I'd been in the coffee shop forever. So I was like, maybe he just really wanted to go outside and get air. He was like twiddling his fingers a lot and wasn't really talking to me. And then he goes down to tie his shoe and I keep walking because I'm figuring he's just going to like they're they're both already tied so I was thinking he was just gonna tighten it and then I realized like maybe five to ten seconds after that he had not gotten up and kept walking so I turned my head he's not standing so I look down when I look down he is on a knee this dude is literally on a knee and I look there and for maybe like three seconds I just stare at him he hadn't said anything at this point and then he says Sydney will you marry me and I have chills right now. So for a solid 30 seconds, I stood there just looking at him right after he said it. And I just stood there. And then after the 30 seconds passed, I just start laughing. Like I busted out laughing because two things. I was so uncomfortable because number one, no one else was around. Like there were people that were sitting at a bench like a little bit away. And then they were like looking at the situation, but there was like no one else. Like there weren't a lot of people. So I was just like, uncomfortable because I didn't know what to say and he didn't start laughing he just looked at me and at this point I'm like laughing because I'm uncomfortable and I thought he was kidding like I honestly thought he was joking we'd known each other for less than 48 hours and this dude is proposing to me I look at him again and I turn away and I just start laughing again because I can't like I don't know how to react in this situation like this situation was so weird to me and I've obviously like never had anything like this happen to me before and I still have chills guys like like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but your girl has chills. But I really didn't know how to react. Like, you just don't know how to react. Like, I am a, I just graduated high school. I have not had a solid relationship ever in my life. So having someone propose to me was just like something, number one, I was not prepared for. And number two, I did not know him, which is what was even crazier. Like, the fact that I did not know this guy and he was just proposing to me. And so seeing him on a knee, I thought I was dreaming or I thought he was kidding because he knows I make YouTube videos, but he like never asked for my channel or anything like that so I don't think he even knows what my channel is and I don't think that he like really cares about YouTube because he just didn't seem to be like the type to like care about that stuff so after I finish all of my laughing and I look at him again because I just could not like figure out if he was kidding or not I look at him again and he says will you so I picked him up by the elbow and I didn't want to belittle his feelings when I was talking to him so I picked him up by the elbow put him like kind of like moved him over to the bench because he was just looking at me he didn't say anything after he said will you and I like looked him in the eye and I had this conversation basically talking to myself because he didn't reply back once and I just give him a hug because I didn't really know how to deal with the situation because number one, you don't ever think you're going to get proposed to. And number two, at this point, like I felt really bad for him because I don't like rejecting people in general. Like it just makes me feel bad because everyone's a nice person. And even if they're mean to you, like you know that everyone has a soul, they have a being, they have a heart and everyone has emotions. And as we were walking back to the coffee shop, it's like cobblestone streets. And he just looks at me and he says, I'll take that as a no. It kind of made me really sad because I felt really bad for him. He seemed really crushed. I like looked at him and he was like, I was just wanting real love. And when I hear real love, like I think someone that you can laugh with, you can connect with, you can, you know, have chemistry with. And with him, I didn't feel any of that. And we were just friends. So I was really confused on how he thought that was real love. But maybe it was to him. Maybe he'd never experienced what real love is. And... It just made me really sad though because within that time frame it was probably 20 minutes that this had all happened we were walking back and he was just gonna walk me back to espresso house so about two hours later i get back 
from Espresso House and go to my place. I get back, I check my Tinder account because, you know, I wanted to see, like, if he had maybe messaged me on there or if he had, like, Snapchatted me. I look him up on my Snapchat and it says pending on his user, so I'm guessing he either unadded me or blocked me. And then on Tinder, his thing on matches, like, you can search people's names, had disappeared. So... I'm guessing he had also unmatched me or blocked me or something, but since he unmatched me on everything, I clearly cannot, like, reach out to him ever again, and I don't think he's ever going to reach out to me again. If anything ever happens, then I'll update you guys, but at this rate, I don't think anything's going to happen. It was just super crazy that it did happen, so now I can check being proposed to in Sweden off my bucket list. But if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications, and screenshot that snap code, which is in the corner here. And um, follow me on my socials because, you know, fun times. But leave a comment down below what you guys would have done in that situation. Personally, for me, I feel like I held it together pretty well, and I think I handled the situation itself really well as well. But maybe there's things I could have done differently. If you guys have any advice for me, leave it down below. And also, I am probably going to be deleting Tinder now because of this. I did have Tinder because I wanted to make friends while traveling. But at this rate, I really think I could make friends better with the cows and the chickens. I don't want another situation like this to happen. It's the ratio, though. Because I hung out with four awesome people. And then there's obviously like that one person that's a little bit off their rocker that's on Tinder. But that's all for this video. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on the post notifications. I will see you guys in my next video, and I hope that you guys enjoy my travel vlogs, everything that's going on on my channel right now. And yeah, so I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.